Hey guys, Janderson here. This is a uh, new type of video I've been working on for today. I've been working on it for a long time. I'm really excited. I uh, That's why I didn't get a video up in April. I was trying to work on this, really get it down, make it solid. I didn't want another Spider-Man video, which I made in like two days, which wasn't very good. I want to make my content good so that you as the viewer can enjoy it. So just a couple of things before I begin. I understand that Ego Raptor also has a sequel comparison show known as Sequelitis, and while I love his work, and I think he does a really nice job with his channel, my channel and my videos, the comparisons, are going to be slightly different. I'm focusing more on like new school games, whereas he focuses on more classics and uh, NES and old school games. So I'm looking at newer content where I might do something older, but I'm trying not to copy off his show. I actually had the idea of a comparison show before I saw Sequelitis, and I really like his stuff, and you should definitely go check it out. But again, my stuff, I'm trying to make it different from his. So without further ado, I give you Janderson Comparisons. Cue intro. What is the first thing you think when they hear your favorite movie or game is getting a sequel? Probably start wondering, is this new game or this new movie going to hold up to the original and have everything that I loved in that one? Let's take a look at a game series that shows that a sequel can be better than the original. The Batman Arkham series. Let's start with Arkham Asylum. Batman Arkham Asylum at the time of its release was called one of the best comic book games ever made. It had a great combat system, fun predator sequences, and a great cast of villains. Let's start with the combat system. The combat system is so simple. It's just an attack and counter system, but is executed almost perfectly. Every counter is crisp, the combos are clean, and the whole thing is very free-flowing. The predator sequences are executed very well. They involve Batman stalking a group of armed thugs around a room, trying to stick to the shadows and the rafters without getting caught. If Batman is caught, they will all open fire on him, so you have to use stealth to your advantage. This is a great time to showcase all of Batman's different gadgets and skills to take the room down silently. The gameplay consists of progressing through the asylum after Joker has escaped and taken control. Arkham Asylum has such a vast amount of super inmates, including Bane, Poison Ivy, and Harley Quinn, who is looking very fine tonight. Careful, Harley. Batman might hit you with that batarang, you know what I'm saying? Bow chicka wow wow! The game also has a great theme of Batman going crazy before he can stop Joker. This is only amplified by Scarecrow constantly trying to get Batman to lose his mind with fear gas. The last Scarecrow sequence shows this best as the game actually freezes restarts and you play as Joker. This is one of the best parts in the game and it really showcases the madness of the asylum and it really gets you into the atmosphere. Man, I get excited just talking about it. Arkham Asylum has a lot to offer from an interesting story, great setting, and fun gameplay. Now amplify all of that by five. That is the best way to explain Arkham City. The story is phenomenal and it has one of the best openings of any game ever. Arkham Asylum started you walking Joker through the intensive carry unit, and it was interesting and everything. It showed everything he was going to break through. It was a good way to showcase the asylum. But Arkham City has you being tortured by Hugo Strange and him revealing he knows that Bruce Wayne is Batman. That's sick, and it intrigues the player. That's how a game should start. Arkham City is a super jail built by Hugo Strange and is a walled off section of Gotham City. It has all the inmates of the old Arkham Asylum and Blackgate Prison. The game takes place around 6 months to anywhere from 3 years later. It's never really specified, but definitely time has passed. During the game, you try to find out what Hugo Strange's Protocol 10 is while trying to find out what Joker's game is. The combat in this game is the same as Arkham Asylum, only tightened up. 
You can still throw out all the punishment you want with new gadgets and a beatdown mechanic, which fits into the game really well, keeping combat very free-flowing. There are also new kinds of boss fights in Arkham City. In Arkham Asylum, pretty much the only boss you fought were Titans, and they're kind of boring, and they're cheap and fought against the player. When you're fighting in combat, it's very free-flowing, and sometimes you attack an enemy accidentally right next to a Titan, and he smacks you. And it's just not fair, you're trying to hit square or Xbox, whatever the button is, to keep combat going, to keep your combo meter up, to get more points, and you end up hitting a Titan, and then you get smacked, and it does tons of damage. And in Arkham City, there are Titans, but when you fight them, it's much better, because you use a new Ultra Stun technique to take them down. Plus, there are new attacks you can use as the Titan. But boss fights in Arkham City as a whole are much better. Take for example Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze is one of the best boss fights in all of video games in my opinion. When you fight Mr. Freeze, you have to adapt your strategy as you fight him. If you use one takedown, he'll adapt so that you can no longer use that takedown. For instance, if you were to use a silent takedown on Mr. Freeze, you can no longer use a silent takedown because when you go behind him, there is an ice jet that shoots behind him that can damage you. So then you have to adapt and use a trap and set the water, set a puddle, electrify it, then knock down Mr. Freeze. A lot of different ways you can take down Mr. Freeze. It's really cool and it shows Batman's diversity. Speaking of villains, the villain choice they have for this game is what makes it. Each one is so diverse and they have all the classic villains like Two-Face Penguin and even Catwoman. They also have the more obscure like Ra's al Ghul or Raz al Ghul. I've heard both. It's dumb. He's like Arabian or something. Who cares? He has a sword. That's what makes him cool. The only one they don't have is Scarecrow, who is not in the game, but there are a bunch of different easter eggs predicting his arrival. Speaking of easter eggs, there are too many to count in this game. When you play this game, you can just tell that a lot of love went into it, and they really loved working on it, and when you play it, it really shows. Stealth is also much improved in the game. With the new double takedowns in stealth, it makes stealth go by quieter and faster. You no longer have to take down one inmate at a time. The new gadgets also benefit stealth tremendously, especially the disarmer, which is both effective but not overpowered considering you can only use it twice in a room, and if an inmate finds out that his gun no longer works, he will go get another one, so you only have one chance with it disarmed. Stealth is also as clean as it ever was, same system, it's a lot of fun. The biggest advantage that Arkham City has over Arkham Asylum is side missions. Arkham Asylum was open world, but there was nothing to do besides the story and the Riddler challenges, which were fun and everything, but, you know, that's not substance. That was something for a fanboy to complete. These side missions impact the story and introduce more villains. That is what we wanted in this game, and that's what they give us. The Riddler challenges alone are genius and test your mind as well as your brain. The one disadvantage this game has is Catwoman. Now don't get me wrong, I think Catwoman is a great character and fun to play as, and I think Batman's gonna hit her with that batarang, you know what I'm saying? She takes away from the story of Batman. The opener is much weaker when you open with Catwoman first. Catwoman also interrupts in the middle of important story points just to go talk to Poison Ivy or fight some tiger guards. Batman Arkham City has everything you want in the game. Story, combat, easter eggs, and visuals. Then Warner Brother Games hit copy and paste into a new game, Arkham Origins, and wrote one more line of code. That's it. That's the whole game. Nothing new, except maybe a better crime scene. No, no new game elements or better villains. That's it. I hope Arkham Knight is a much better conclusion to this game series. Not the same good thing. A new, better thing. Hey everybody, thanks for watching again. Really appreciate it. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel to catch when all my new videos are coming out. From this moment on, guys, I promise, video a month, I swear that is my solemn vow. So thanks again for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want. That really helps me out, helps me make a little throw me, you know what I'm saying? Alright, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you on the next Janderson.